Greetings Turians, Chaos here. Previously, we discussed how using foundations beneath your builds can really spice them up and make them look better. And in my opinion, something that can easily kill your build is a boring or lackluster roof. So today, I'm gonna show you some different roof styles to kind of spice it up and give you a more interesting looking roof for your builds. Now, I have about a dozen different roof styles in mind, and obviously I don't have enough time for that in just one episode. So today, we're just gonna be looking at medieval roof designs. One of the first style of roofs that comes to mind when I think of medieval builds is the thatch roof. And it's something that I personally associate with like a peasant hut or something on the poorer end of things. And to get the thatch look, I tend to use hay block painted brown, which is what I'm going to be doing for this first roof design. I'm giving it a slight slope, and I'm just kind of going to give the roof uh, multiple tiers. And what I mean by that is there's going to be a background layer and a front ground layer. I'm laying the sloped hay as the front ground layer, and then the background layer just to kind of give it a third dimensional uh, look without being isometric. I'm not a huge fan of building isometric personally Though they do look nice. It's just not my style But I could still give it a three-dimensional appearance by actuating this row of hay blocks on top and then placing some hay wall beneath the uh, Physical roof that we have going on Now I'm just going to work on sloping the roof a little bit just to give it a nice rounder edge and make it look a little more appealing. To accent the thatched roof, I'm throwing down some spooky wood wall painted brown just to make it look like it has some support beams. Additionally, what you could do is take some rich mahogany fence and place it. it stands out a little bit more because it's a little bit lighter and you could also give it some knobs on the top just to kind of give it a little bit extra texture. To add even more detail to the roof, I'm going to add a layer of living wood block beneath and then slope them so that they are separated. And then using any kind of wood wall that you want, just fill in the gaps. Don't worry about the parts where you see a little bit of wall sticking out. Once you actually do the house's interior walls, those will go away and it won't be an issue any longer. Additionally, you could opt to actuate that layer of living wood wall if you want to, just to kind of make it contrast with the hay a little bit more. Another kind of thatch roof design, which I'll do in a different shape, you might try making with the leaf wand with brown paint again. I'm not as much of a fan of this style, but it is something that I wanted to show you guys. Also, keep in mind, if you're using the leaf and the living wood wand together, sometimes you'll get green specks where the blocks merge. If you just slap some brown paint on top of that, they go away and you don't really notice them anymore. Now I'm just going to shape the slopes of the roof just to give it a little more of a smooth appearance.
And then on the inside, I'm going to once again line it with some living wood blocks. The reason why I like to line the inside of uh, roofings like this, the thatch would be relatively weak. It would need something to hold it up. And in my mind, it helps to have a physical block like the living wood to just kind of hold it up and make it seem a little bit more realistic. And then once again, we're just going to fill in these gaps with whatever wood wall you have. Uh, I'm going with a spooky wood wall because that's what I happen to have in my inventory at the time. Uh, I might actually prefer to use the living wood wall if I had that on me. And that's the thatch roof done. Another kind of roof that comes to mind when I think of medieval builds is kind of a step up from the thatch roof and that's going to be a wooden roof. So what I'm doing right here is just creating some cross support beams made out of the living wood wand. And I did increase the height of the walls because I'm going to be adding another shape of wood just to give you a different idea of uh, kinds of shapes that you can do for your roofs. So I'm lining the edge of the living wood wall with spooky wood wall. The reason why I prefer to use spooky wood when it comes to medieval builds is it kind of looks a little bit more rugged. It's got some dark patches in it. It doesn't look quite as neat or clean. And that's something that I feel kind of fits the style a little bit more. And once we have the roof shaped, we're just going to go ahead and fill in the gaps once again. And another shape that you might do with a wood roof for a medieval build is just a slight angular build, kind of like what I'm doing right here. And you just need to tweak it until you get the shape that you're shooting for. And once you're happy with the roof design, all you need to do to give it a little bit of sense of support is add a row of rich mahogany fence painted brown, slope some. You could also grab some lead painted fence and place it around in segments to kind of make it look like it has some support struts in it or some bolts. And that's just the uh, general design of wood roof houses that I like to go with. The next roof that we're going to be looking at is a stone battlement. If you've been following my work for a while, you're going to have seen this quite a bit. It's something that I really enjoy doing in medieval style builds just because I think it looks great. So what we have here is a row of sandstone slab and uh, sandwiched between that a row of stone slab because they do not blend together and the hard lines is what I'm personally going after and then I'm gonna put segments of ebonstone brick on the top and cap those off with 
gray painted sandstone slab and hammer them all down into halves like that. And that's how we get this battlement shape. To give it a little bit more detail, I grab some gray painted rich mahogany wall and I just place it underneath the end caps just to kind of give it a little bit more detail on the top. To give a little bit more detail inside and because these roofs look like they'd be pretty heavy in general, I tend to add some support arcs on the interior of the house. And I'm just showing you what you might see if you were to use a different kind of wall that it doesn't blend with. And to fill in the gaps or the little spaces of air that you see under each of those battlement caps, you just grab a little bit more gray painted wall and just place it underneath the center segments. The final roof design that we're going to take a look at is something that I'm seeing gaining popularity in the Terraria building community, and it's kind of an extravagant looking tower roof. So I'm starting off with some red dynasty shingle and some deep red paint, and I'm just going to give it a general shape. Now that we have the basic shape of the building done, it looks pretty good, but you could add details to it. So we're gonna bring out some blue shingle, painted deep red off to the side, just to kind of give it a more of a layered look, like I was speaking of earlier. And the reason why I'm using blue shingles here is so it doesn't blend with the red shingles. However, we have this issue where the uh, red and blue that I'm placing here meet up. I want them to appear blended, they just don't. So to do that, all you need to do is hammer them into a slope and now that segment looks blended even though there are two different kinds of tile there. Which will still allow us to have unblended segments at the other points where the roofs intersect. Now I'm just going to slope the roof just to give it a little bit more of a cleaner and sleeker design. And now we're gonna fill in these gaps with some deep red painted copper brick wall. And the roof's already looking a lot better, but you can add more detail to it. So I'm gonna grab some blue dynasty sh shingles again with some gray paint this time and just add some accent points. Then I'm going to switch to some rich mahogany wall, again with gray, and add some accent points onto the background wall as well. Using some gray painted ebonstone brick, I fill in the gaps behind the, the spaces behind those blocks there. And now you can grab some lead fence and just place it around in areas where you want to add a little bit more finer detail to just kind of give it look like, make it look like it has some bolts or rivets into the roof to just kind of hold it together. It's a minor detail, but I do think it helps the build pop. And I'm just gonna give a spike at the very top and hammer down a couple of the shingles and just place some gray painted rich mahogany wall behind it just to make the spire at the very top stand out even more. And that's the roof 
for the tower top done. We have the battlements, we have a medieval style wood, and the two thatchet style roofs. I hope you guys found this medieval roof build tip video to be helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment. They really help me out. And please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.